Great, thank you. Craig and I just agreed off stage. neither of us was going to attempt to lift the other. <laughs> um, great, well, uh, thank you all for, for joining us today. Craig, thank you for being here at UpNexus. We're um, honored to have you here at the company and as part of this Elevate event. Um, and I'm excited to have this, this chat with you about leading through values. Yeah, I'm really glad to be here. This is fun. Um, well, it goes without saying, uh, you don't need uh, really an introduction. I think everybody's familiar with Craigslist, and we're going to chat a little bit more about um, your philanthropic efforts. So I think to start off with, given we're talking about leading with your values, it would be wonderful to hear from you what's your number one value and how has that shaped you and how you've you know, operated as a founder and entrepreneur? Well, as a nerd, uh, old school, in Sunday school, when I heard that I should treat people like I want to be treated, I took that pretty seriously, pretty literally, and uh, that's uh, the primary cause of action for uh, much of what I do. Beyond that, now and then, I try to give the other person a break. Now and then, you also try to, uh, yeah, you try to give the other person a break, like Kevin Spacey, I think, quotes Jack Lemmon, if you manage to do well, send the elevator back down. So you, you try to help people. And this idea of sending the elevator back down um, seems really relevant to what you're doing today with um, your philanthropic efforts. Can you talk a little bit about the major causes that you're supporting and, and why you're supporting those causes? Yeah, um, right now I have a handful of initiatives in, uh, in some flux. Uh, demanding different amounts of hands-on time from me. My favorite is on trustworthy journalism, basically uh, asking newspapers and so on to report in good faith, to do things like try not to uh, omit, not, try not to report uh, in an inaccurate way, and if you do make a mistake, correct it, act in good faith. Another area has to do with support for uh, veterans and the families of both veterans but also active service members. You know, we kind of know that we owe uh, veterans an awful lot, although we're tending to forget as a country, uh, but we never quite understood how much we owe families, because they also serve, and they uh, sometimes suffer and sacrifice in a big way. Uh, something new that isn't formally announced that I'll be doing with a local vets group, uh, one that's based here, is uh, support for women veterans the, uh, oh, the theme is uh, She Who's Born the Battle, which is a variation of uh, Abraham Lincoln talking about support for He Who's Born the Battle. But a lot of women are serving, a lot of women have served, and a larger percentage of women will be serving in the armed forces. Uh, another effort, which I've largely delegated actually, is in Women in Tech. Um, that's uh, run by uh, Allison Capen out of Women Who Tech and RAD campaign out of Washington. Uh, I've pretty thoroughly delegated that to her, not only because uh, she knows the area pretty well, but having her do it spares me the burden of ever having to mansplain. <laughs> Those of you who ride the subways know that I'm still coping with the, uh, an unfortunate tendency to manspread. You, you can take that literally, I'm afraid. Um, are there any particular events or reasons why you've chosen you know, um, veterans and, and women veterans or um, some of the work that you're doing around um, the, the Iraqi work that you just mentioned, why you've chosen those particular causes? Um, one of the reasons has to do with that treat people like you want to be treated thing, which basically means try to be uh, fair to people. Um, that uh, motivates a certain amount of uh, support for those groups who are actually trying to uh, do good work along those lines. And again, to send the elevator back down. Uh, in a few weeks, I'll be back in New York attending my first meeting as a member of the uh, Girls Who Code Board. And uh, uh, I, I just found out that they're in the same uh, building uh, as this. Um, other areas I find that if I, well, in the case of veterans and their families, I figure if someone's willing to sacrifice a lot 
and maybe risk taking a bullet to protect me, uh, then I should give back a little. And so I'm trying to do that through different groups, some national. There's the Iraq and Afghanistan Vets of America. There's the Bob Woodruff Foundation. And I may even have something in mind uh, with uh, donors choose, because there are schools that serve military families. Meanwhile, teachers don't get uh, enough respect. They don't get enough support. Teachers don't get paid very well and often have to pay for school supplies. Uh, so these are diff different, the different variations of a theme from my point of view. Uh, you want to treat people fairly. You want to give people a break. That's the sending the elevator back down metaphor. You just try to do these things. And then when it comes to the news stuff, a democracy, well, what I usually say is that a trustworthy press is the immune system of democracy. The idea is without a trustworthy press telling you what's going on, if you have a democracy, without a trustworthy press, you're kind of screwed. Well, congratulations on Girls Who Code. AppNexus is a big supporter of Reshma and the organization and, and what they're trying to do. Um, in fact, we, um, uh, Brian O'Kelly, our CEO, had funded the first Girls Who Code cohort, and uh, they're housed here in our, in our office. And so it's a great, great win for that organization and excited to see you put your, uh, your you know, collective heft behind what they're trying to accomplish. Um, so you talked a little bit about uh, treating people how you want to be treated. And of course, uh, this entire conversation around leading uh, with your values is really interesting today, given this morning's news, or, or last night's news, rather, that uh, Travis Kalanick has stepped down from Uber as their CEO. Um, I'm interested to know, what's your perspective on how the entire Uber situation from Travis stepping down and the Holder memo on Uber, how does this impact founders and investors um, within the, the startup and tech ecosystem going forward? Well, about the specific situation, what I'm doing is relying on reporting by uh, Sarah Lacey and then observing and even talking for a moment with uh, Ariana. Uh, something uh, toxic started there and the, let's say the tone, oh, the moral tone of a, an organization is normally going to reflect that of the uh, founder or founders. Uh, that moving on, oh, that could be a problem at times, depending on what's happened. In tech industry, I do know that a number of them started by male, human male engineers, and speaking as, as one, Sometimes we're oblivious to social convention and norms in a good way. <laughs> um, and uh, so to just make this personal, because I can't speak on behalf of anyone uh, and anyone else. Um, remember, as a, as a nerd, old school, I grew up with no clue as to what social conventions were, which can, you can imagine how much fun I had in school, and high school in particular. <laughs> I'll add that, uh, I may be nerd patient zero, because not long after Dr. Seuss invented the term nerd, I was born, <laughs> and I really did wear a plastic pocket protector in high school. I really did a thick black glasses taped together, and even right now, I'm only simulating social skills. <laughs> and I can only do that for a little while. But that means that I do tend to take treat people like you want to be treated seriously and literally, and so that's extended into my adult life. For that matter, high school uh, history, Mr. Shulsky teaching us the value of the free press in a democracy. I took that literally and remembered it. Uh, he taught us pretty thoroughly the whole, uh, whole idea of Bill of Rights and due process, so I take that pretty seriously and uh, pretty literally. So those are things that can stick with you if you're a male human engineer founder of a company which offers some hope in some of these situations. The downside is that we may be completely oblivious to the need, well, first, as problems develop, let's say, uh, oh, let's say terrorism and attraction to it being a, site, a problem on your site Sometimes you're slow to notice it, 
and you may uh, be slow to do something about it, but when you do something about it, then it's a big deal. And for that specific problem, I can see firsthand Facebook and Google doing some really good stuff, but they're just starting. Uh, as a senior woman at a company that's founded by a human male engineer, um, I, could, I couldn't agree with you more. I think a lot of the work that we've been doing here at AppNexus, whether it's on the diversity and inclusion front or the news integrity front together with you and Jeff Jarvis, um, our commitment to transparency and, and uh, brand quality is very much um, driven by the values of our human male engineer founder and the rest of the leadership team. So. I, for one, am hoping that this is something that becomes uh, ever more important for boards and VC investors going forward. Um, so relatedly, uh, going back to your days uh, as the founder and CEO at Craigslist, um, you made a decision to uh, not to lead Craigslist and to hire a CEO. Um, you just stayed involved in some capacities uh, with respect to customer service. Can you talk about why you made that decision and whether it was difficult? Well, there were uh, two big decisions made in 99 and 2000. The first one, after talking to a lot of uh, VCs and bankers, just socially in Silicon Valley, knowing that I had to make Craigslist from a hobby into a company, they were telling me that if I monetized it uh, the usual way, uh, I might be bringing uh, billions of dollars uh, with me. And I was thinking, uh, that uh, doesn't make anyone happy. Uh, that much money usually ruins lives. Um, and you'd have to go around with a bodyguard. And I remembered in, it back, in, uh, back in Sunday school, uh, I kind of learned when enough is enough. A tangent, uh, recent articles which may have quoted my net worth in excess of a billion, I can only suggest uh, find a suitable large number to divide that number with, and you'll be, you'll be much closer to the truth. <laughs> um, so the deal is, this is not altruistic, it's not pious, it's just kind of knowing what my values are, and thanking uh, in the first phase uh, the teachers at uh, Sunday School, not very far from here, about 30 miles west in Marstown, New Jersey, and then uh, that other dose of things from Mr. Shulsky in high school uh, history. So that's one decision, you know, no one needs a billion dollars. The other decision in that time frame is that about a year after, uh, people around me helped me understand that as a manager, I suck. <laughs> uh, so I hired someone else in that place. I got highly involved in customer service. Um, and. That's, so I've been doing customer service in some form for literally half my life, and so I've done customer service for uh, 32 years, uh, and I'm committed to doing enough of it just to stay in touch with what's real for the uh, re remainder of my life. So uh, treat people how you want to be treated and a healthy dose of self-awareness. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Look, you obviously believe in using your influence and um, your money divided by whatever amount that faulty article stated to further causes that you care about. What are things that, you know, let's say folks here um, don't necessarily have that money or that level of influence. Are there things that we can be doing on an everyday basis? Um, I don't really know because we're talking, from my point of view, about movement building. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually involved in a formal program like that at Consumer Reports. I'm on that board for a few months longer. But meanwhile, as a first experiment, uh, I've helped fund an effort figuring out online privacy and personal cybersecurity. So we're trying to start a movement there. And I'm in the process, with all the nonprofits I support, mostly on starting with the bigger contribution areas, all I know for sure is bottom-up efforts, if you can make them happen, you know, grassroots stuff, that's the key to sustained uh, change. That means everyone standing up for what you believe in, in big matters and small matters, uh, standing up for them. And in this era of uh, social media, it means, well, when you see something that you believe in, let's say posted by someone you uh, know or respect or believe in, 
give it a retweet, give it a Facebook share, uh, something like that. Uh, stand up for what you believe in, even if it's going to, uh, even if it's going to be painful. My most traumatic episode, from which I'm still recovering, literally, is when a reporter told me that uh, either I, well, the reporter wanted a juicy story for cable TV, and either I could compromise a lot of ongoing investigations, or I would be uh, publicly embarrassed. And uh, I, uh, reading a lot of Roman history at the time, I decided to, uh, I decided to fall on my sword and uh, hope to recover someday. So we have uh, just a few minutes left, so I thought we could do maybe a quick lightning round of a couple of questions to leave folks with. Um, who's been the most influential person in your life? Uh, probably uh, Leonard Cohen, the uh, poet, singer, and uh, rabbi, and in the Old Testament sense, uh, prophet. Uh, how about latest book that you've read, which maybe you'd recommend for this group? Um, the one that comes to mind real fast, because I read a lot, so there's uh, Infomocracy by Malka Older, and she has a new one coming out soon, which describes how our current systems of government throughout the world might change and fragment, be run as democracies, uh, voting run by future Google. Uh, so you mentioned earlier you're going to be spending a lot more time in New York. Uh, what's something that you're excited about doing here? Well, what brings me to New York is that my the center of gravity for my uh, family is here. My uh, wife is with my uh, well sister-in-law right now, her sister, hopefully trying to convince a three-year-old that his favorite toy is not a box of uh, shipping peanuts. <laughs> You know, that, sh that he should be playing with one of the board games we sent him, but he loves the shipping box better. <laughs> also, this is the center of philanthropy for most of, yeah, center of gravity for most of my philanthropies. By the way, I've learned that I can rest the microphone on one of my rolls of fat, which is, uh, <laughs> which is very effective. Another good lesson learned there. <laughs> Who needs SoulCycle? Um, <laughs> last question. What's the number one piece of advice that you'd leave this audience with? Um, my new uh, bit of advice, which I learned speaking at an Elevate thing recently with Ilana Rania, because uh, she was thinking about what advice could I give uh, what, you know, middle school uh, girls, is to uh, never do anything to dumb yourself down. Uh, I observed in, uh, in, mostly in high school, uh, women, including a cousin, who, you know, they were at the top of their class, uh, literally, in junior school. Uh, back then, it was structured that way. Um, and, yeah, I saw a number of women dumb themselves down, I guess, to uh, please men, and just uh, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. And, and in fact, now that I think about it, I cited, because we were talking, possibly uh, writing things down, uh, the role models, unfortunately, that I can think of right now, I recommend uh, Lisa on Simpsons. <laughs> uh, me, myself, my role model is becoming Grandpa Simpson. <laughs> Seriously. And uh, there was a show called Daria that I loved. And so Daria, and also her, uh, art, her uh, artist friend are, aren't bad as role models. Yeah, I like Daria, but I kind of liked her friend more. <laughs> That's great. Don't, don't dumb yourself down for anyone. I'm going to keep that one for my seven-year-old daughter. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure to speak with you today and a pleasure to have you here. Thanks. Thank you so much, Craig and Nithya. Um, we're just gonna leave you with a few housekeeping things. Um, I don't have my little clicker. This voice is, uh, this is Maricela. If you listen to the podcast,